Welcome to the channel. I am the King Koopa. Thank you for stopping by and I hope you are having a great day. I have a great video for you. It's going to be very informative so we are going to cut right to the chase. We're not going to have a super long intro and waste your time because you're either here for three reasons. One, you are interested in doing the intake swap. You want to know more about it. You might have some questions. Two, you just enjoy my content, which if you do, I really appreciate it. Or three, you are in the middle of your intake swap right now and you need to get back to the garage. So I'm going to put a table of contents up right now so that way if there's a certain part that you have questions about or you are stumped on, you can skip right to that part in the video, get your questions answered, and get back in the garage. So if that helps you out, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it. I would like to say that this intake swap was done on my 04 Silverado. That's a 1500 with the 4.8 in it. This uh, video applies for the 5.3s and the 6.0 motors. This is a new body style, which is the 03-06 to or an 07 Classic. Um, this could also apply for the new new body styles, the 07 to 2013s. If you have an earlier model Silverado, which is the 99 to 02, that is a drive-by cable. I am not sure exactly what all that qualifies for for the swap. So if you have one of those, um, some of this information is going to apply to you, but some of it's not because the 03 and newer are drive-by wire, which that is an electronic throttle body and not a cable-driven throttle body. This video also applies for GMCs as well, not just Silverados. I mean, it could be an LS swap that you have done or somebody else has done a Gen 3 or newer. But I am going to cover a lot in this video. We're going to start by talking about the differences between the intakes, the throttle bodies, injectors, fuel rails, whether you have a return or returnless fuel system. I'm even going to show you how to install all these parts, so make sure that you stay to the end because at the end we are going to talk about the different routes or options that you could choose because going full-blown like I did might not be for everybody or you might be on a budget. So you might want to be getting a couple extra horsepower and get the best bang for your buck. These Trailblazer SS intake manifolds do hold boost really well, so they are a great budget option. We are finally about to get started. If you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments below. I try to cover everything as much as possible and super detailed, but I might have missed a few things. And if so, let me know. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the video. For your removal of your factory intake manifold, this is actually pretty easy, so we're not going to go super in-depth on this process. First thing you want to do, disconnect your battery cables. Second thing, we're going to remove our air intake tube, get that out of the way. Then we're going to remove the alternator. You don't have to, but it's definitely going to help you with a lot of room to play. Then we're going to be moving on to the harness. This is the main harness right here that runs across the top. This has a couple quick clamps that hold it in place as well as a bracket. We are going to disconnect our MAF sensor. There are a couple connectors also. And we're going to move right along disconnecting your coil pack harness as well as the injector harnesses. Once we have this unclipped, we're going to push it up and pull it out of the way. Now that these harnesses are going to be out of the way, we're going to disconnect our fuel line next. You have a safety tab right here keeping it from backing out. Next, we're going to stuff a lot of rags down here because there will be a lot of fuel that spills out of this line. To remove that, you're going to use a fuel line disconnect tool. I believe it is a 3 8 Pretty simple to use. You just slide this over and you push it in and it quick releases and you pull the line off. Be sure to disconnect the vacuum hose. And make sure you just do a double check to make sure that there are no connectors to the throttle body, the intake manifold, anything that can snag it when you pull it up. And the last step is we're going to take our 8mm socket. There are five bolts holding the intake manifold down on both sides. You might have to get a couple extensions or some swivels to get very crafty to get into the back. These bolts will not pull completely out. They do sit idle inside the intake manifold. Once you have those 10 bolts out, make sure you pull the harness up and out of the way. It helps to have two people. You can remove the fuel rails, the intake manifold, and the throttle body all in one go. I picked this intake manifold up off of a buddy for $150 with the fuel rails and injectors. A lot of them can be found for around $300 to $200. First thing we want to compare is the throttle bodies. So this is the standard truck intake. This is the Trailblazer SS. That is a 78 millimeter opening, a 90 millimeter opening. You can reuse your stock throttle body on the Trailblazer SS if you want to, but you are going to need a four bolt to three bolt adapter plate, which is perfectly okay, but you are gonna be creating a bottleneck, so you are gonna rob just a little bit of power. Not a huge big deal. If you wanna maximize your power, you can swap to an LS3 or an LS2 90 millimeter throttle body. 
If you do do the throttle body swap, you are gonna need an X-Link harness, depending on your gold blade or silver blade of your throttle body. If you do use the X-Link harness, you are going to have to buy a GM or AC Delco throttle body. The X-Link does not work on a lot of the eBay knockoff throttle bodies. The X-Link harness is an 8-pin to 6-pin conversion and allows the signals from the new school throttle body to cooperate with your old truck harness. Now moving on to the fuel system. The standard truck fuel rails are pretty large. They do have 22-pound injectors. The Trailblazer SS runs 33-pound injectors, so that is a little bit of an upgrade. You cannot run your stock fuel rails on the Trailblazer SS manifold. I have seen guys do it, but they have to cut the tube here on both sides, weld on an and fitting, and run a stainless steel braided hose over the top because the stock fuel rails will not clear the hump of the Trailblazer SS manifold. If you do decide to run a custom hose, reuse your old injectors and the fuel rails, you're going to have to make little adapters, metal tabs up top to support your fuel rails because the heights are different. My truck in this setup is a returnless fuel system, meaning there is only one inlet port and there is not an outlet port. If you have an older style truck that does have a returned fuel system, returnless fuel rails can be adapted to your OEM return style fuel lines by utilizing a C5 Corvette fuel filter between the Trailblazer SS fuel rails and your OEM lines. The fuel filter will snap directly onto the inlet of the Trailblazer SS fuel rails if the inlet is bent upwards carefully. Your factory feed and return line will snap directly onto the inlet and return of the C5 filter regulator. It has an internal fuel pressure regulator and re regulates to a static 58 PSI of fuel pressure. Be sure to account for the static fuel pressure in your ECM programming. The easiest method for the fuel system is to use the Trailblazer SS fuel rail and the injectors. If you do plan on doing that, you are going to need adapters from the EV6 injectors to your truck harness. These next few parts are an absolute must for the swap. You need new intake manifold gaskets. Do not reuse your old ones. And I would recommend buying a new O-ring for the throttle body. You can also reuse your factory hose off your old truck intake, which connects from the top of the manifold to the driver's side rear valve cover, which connects to the PCV valve in the back. You can also swap over the hose that comes out the back, which does connect to the canister next to the brake booster. Some of these manifolds do come locked in the rear, so you will have to uncap that and run your old factory hose on it. Now let's talk about map sensors. The map sensor on the truck intake is located towards the rear, and it is actually located towards the front on the Trailblazer SS manifold. The older style map sensor and the new new body style map sensor are different. They utilize a different connector, and their diameter of their sensor is different. The newer style intake also utilizes three different mounting methods the click bar and stud, a single mounting bolt on the side, or the third method, it utilizes two tabs that stick up and you slide the map sensor on top. Regardless what style you have, you need to make sure it has a nice secure fit. I was able to make mine work with the click bar and stud. I did have to file this piece down a little bit to make it a nice snug fit. Or I've also seen people use a Z style shaped sheet metal bracket on this mounting stud or that mounting stud to apply pressure to the map sensor. That will work out great. From the research I have done and talked to my tuner, we both would recommend not using the newer style map sensor. One, because the connectors and your harness are a little different, but two, the tuning software is going to have a little bit more troubles trying to get your truck to tune right. So I would recommend using your OEM sensor and finding a nice secure way to mount it. Moving right along to the EVAP system. On the truck intake, your purge valve solenoid is located up front. For the SS manifold, you will need a different purge valve solenoid, and that is located on the driver's side fuel rail towards the front. For the crossover tube to the top of this port, I could not find the hose at the dealership or the auto parts store, so we are going to run our own 3 8 hose. This end of the purge valve solenoid, take the cap off, and you will run another hose from here to the back of the firewall, which I can show you in the engine bay. Here is the old EVAP line off the truck. As you can see, it was connected way back in there where this hose is connected to. And it came up over the top and then went up and mounted on top of the old intake manifold. Well, this hose no longer works because of this new EVAP solenoid. You could try to reuse this factory, connect it back there, cut the tube to where it lines up with this, which that might work, but I believe that the diameter of this tube is too big 
to actually create a good seal on here. So instead we're gonna be using our 3 8 hose just like we did up top here. Our 3 8 hose is gonna come out of the top of the port, connect into here, and then our new 3 8 hose is gonna connect from here all the way to the back of the firewall. This hose is 12 inches and one quarter, and this hose is two feet, but as you can see, we're gonna have to trim it because it's going to be pretty long. And I also put a hose clamp on the back of that hose to make sure it come off. All these hose fittings are super tight, so uh, I'm actually having a hard time getting them off by hand, so I don't think you necessarily need to hose clamp them. If your new intake manifold did not come with the mounting bolts to secure it, that's okay. You can reuse your stock hardware, but you are gonna have to take this rubber bushing off of every single bolt because they are the exact same length, exact same bolt, even with the same collar, they just do not have that rubber gasket material right here, so you are gonna have to take that off. First thing you wanna do to prep your intake for install, rotate it back, you wanna take these old gaskets off. It has a clip on both ends and a clip in the middle. We're gonna wipe this down and then we're gonna install our new manifold gaskets. So here's the rear map sensor. It has a green, gray, and orange wire coming out of this main harness on the passenger side. So normally the map sensor is in the back of the intake manifold. So this was way back here with about that much room. So what we did is we took this wire protector off, cut the electrical tape, peeled it all back. Be super, super careful when you cut the electrical tape so you don't nick any wires inside or cut a wire inside. If you cut a whole entire wire inside and don't notice, you're gonna have a lot of issues. So we cut that back to about halfway up here, ran the wires out. We're gonna coat these now with electrical tape and another small wire sheath protectant. So that way we can run it to this map sensor on the front of the intake. So now we have plenty of room. That way we did not have to cut and extend any wires. This is the bracket that holds the wiring harness on top of the manifold through this nut right here. Well, all this stuff protruding on the bottom side is actually getting away from us being able to bolt it down. So we're gonna grind some of this off. Here's what it looks like now. We ground these not all the way flush, but took a big chunk off. And we also cut this little tit off here because that was blocking on this ridge. Now it fits in there nice and easy. We are now going to torque the first sequence at 44 inch pounds and then a second sequence at 89 inch pounds. And then we're going to take that rear hose to right here. We'll take the cap off. We'll give it a little bit of extra slack. And then we're gonna mark it, cut the hose, and then we'll find a good sturdy spot to zip tie it to. Here are the two hoses that connect from the middle of the top of the intake manifold to the driver's side rear valve cover PCV valve. This is the stock truck hose, which just has rubber fittings on both sides that slide over the fittings. This is off the Trailblazer SS intake manifold. This slides down inside. And this has a special connector for a locking ring. You cannot use this on your PCV valve, it won't fit. So you're gonna have to adapt these hoses to this connector. There we go, we just took our pliers and just kind of chunked it off. And now we're gonna take the elbow off the Silverado tube. Boom, slides right in and that'll fit right on our PCV valve. Here 
Here are the injector adapters. This goes to the old truck harness, and here are to the Trailblazer SS injectors. As shown right here, they clip in just like that. Nice and easy, and then you want to tuck these away so that way they're not rubbing or vibrating on anything and try to keep them off the head because the head will have a lot of heat. And make sure that your harness doesn't hang down low down here and touch the exhaust manifolds. Since we did have to add this coupling to space the air intake tube away from the throttle body because of that shoulder on the side, we did have to notch our fan blades because it was just barely grazing that and uh, I don't want it to rub a hole in this air intake tube. And that gives me just about a finger distance away from the air intake tube so that should be fine. The old truck throttle body has a port on the bottom side that one tube comes from the radiator, connects in, and the other tube connects to the steam vent ports that the new LS3 throttle body does not have those. We're gonna fix that by doing a bypass with a double hose barb splicer, quarter inch to quarter inch, just like that. Or you could use regular hose clamps if you want to. Here's that hose that connects down here to the radiator. We have it clipped in here. We spun this clamp and moved it, drilled a hole in the fan cover, clipped it in here, and then it runs up underneath on the top radiator hose. There's another clip right here by my finger, and it runs across up underneath right there. And there we have them connected. Now you want to make sure this is zip tied up and stays away from your belt. Here is the X-Link harness. This is what you're going to adapt your new LS3 or LS2 style throttle body from an 8-pin to a 6-pin. It's also going to convert the signal over to your old style harness. So it's a simple install. Notice it does say gold on there. That is for a gold blade throttle body. It does matter if you have a gold or silver blade. You have to specify that when you order online. And it does need to be a GM or AC Delco product for the throttle body or else it most likely will not work. Boom, and now it's connected. And time to zip tie this up so it keeps off anything hot or the belt. Off the top passenger side valve cover, there is a metal hose coming out of it. That is for the fresh air for the PCV. On the old truck intake, it was this hose right here, and that connects to the top of the manifold. On the new Trailblazer manifold, there was no port there for the fresh air, and there was no port on the throttle body. So you are going to have to tap a hole and insert a hose from your air intake tube to the top of that metal valve at the top of the valve covers. Thankfully, my S&B cold air intake kit came with a little nipple here. They also sent a hose and hose clamps, so I cut a quarter of an inch off to open that tube up, and now we're going to slide this hose on the top of the valve cover hose and the air intake tube. We are now officially finished with the install. So we cover the air intake, the throttle body, fuel supply, EVAP sensor, MAP sensor, the X length, the PCV lines, and even the torques for the intake manifold. I think that is a wrap. So the last thing we have to do now is start it and let you hear how it sounds. stretch of this video where we're going to talk about the different routes and the cost of the swap. Option one is going to be your budget build so you do not have a lot of cash but still want to get some decent power out of your motor. All these prices are going to be estimates because different websites have different prices. Some of these prices are from my personal receipts that do have taxes and shipping included into that fee. Some of them do not. So for finding the Trailblazer SS intake manifold, you can find it anywhere from around $100 to $300 depending on how lucky you get or how far you are willing to travel. So for option one, let's say you find the Trailblazer intake just by itself or you buy one of the Dorman intake manifolds offline, which are pretty identical. They run about $100 just by themselves. 
Then let's say you want to reuse your truck injectors and the fuel rails themselves. Well, you're going to have to modify that fuel rail to fit. So you are going to have to run two AND fittings, weld those onto your fuel rails, and run an AND line across the top to clear the hump of the intake manifold. Those AND fittings run anywhere from about 10 to 20 bucks a fitting. So we're just going to say 15 for two fittings is about $30 plus the AND line. You might need about two feet, so we're going to say 10 bucks for that. If you can't find the Trailblazer fuel rails or want to run aftermarket fuel rails, those run about 100 bucks by themselves. And let's say you want to keep your stock throttle body. You will need a 4 bolt to 3 bolt adapter, which is about $25. And for every one of our options, I included the EVAP solenoid, which is $40. The intake manifold gaskets, $40. And the throttle body gasket, which is about $10. So that brings you about a total of $260 for the swap or $360 if you wanted to run those aftermarket fuel rails. So honestly, not too bad for a budget bill. That is, if you're finding the intake manifold for $100, if you found one for $300, you're going to have to add $200 to that total. Moving on to option number two, say you found an intake manifold with the fuel rails and the injectors for around $300. You will need the injector adapters for that, which are $40, which puts you at a total of $500. Still, at $500, you have a nice, clean setup, and everything will work properly. I would definitely recommend getting the injectors cleaned if you bought them used. I bought mine used and found out that they were actually 36 pound injectors, not 32 pound injectors, and they had a lot of E85 gunk inside them. So that definitely helped clean them up and they are all now within spec. And our last option, which is option three, this is the one that I currently have for the most power. You have the Trailblazer SS intake anywhere from $100 to $300. Your 90 millimeter LS3 throttle body costs around 240 bucks, depending on what website you get it from. I did include the injector cleaning because it was very important, $60. The air intake adapter was $40 bucks since I do have the SNB cool air intake. Injector adapters were $40, and you will need an X-Link, which costs $230 to adapt the signals for that new style throttle body. And as always, the EVAP solenoid $40, intake gaskets $40, and throttle body gasket was $10, which comes out to about $800 to $1,000, depending on how much you bought your intake manifold for. And if you wanted to step it up a notch and went with an SMB cold air intake, that cost $270 for a total of $1,070 or $1,270. So that is pretty expensive, but it definitely has the power potential. I cannot give you the horsepower numbers for this modification because I also did a cam, long tube headers, catless Y pipe, a whole bunch of other modifications. So I am not exactly sure on how much horsepower you're going to gain or the cost to horsepower ratio in this modification. I would honestly look at your long-term goal. What are you trying to do with this truck? Is it a daily driver? Is it an off-roader? Is it a street truck? Are you running on a budget right now? Are you trying to get the most power out of your truck? I would sit down, figure all that out, and then go from there and figure out what you want to buy and which option fits you best. And I think that about sums it up, guys. All the links for these products are going to be in the description below so you can find them easily. And I hope this video really helped you out. If you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know how I did or if there's anything I can improve on. Or let me know if there's another video you want me to cover next. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're having a great day, and I'll catch you in next week's video. Peace.